What's going on guys? This is Vinyl like Puma, back with another quick countdown video for you guys, and today I figured it could be fun to talk about 10 characters that didn't appear or were missing from the recently released Borderlands 3 reveal trailer. Now, before we start, I wanted to go ahead and ask you guys about something that I noticed in the trailer, and that is simply if you, like me, thought that Marcus kind of looked like Kellogg from Fallout 4. Leave a comment about what you think in the comment section below, or also feel free to leave a like on this video for Marcus. Otherwise guys, and in no particular order, let's go ahead and start with our first candidate, which is going to be four characters, which are Axton, Gage, Krieg, and Salvador. So, I've got to say that I'm actually kind of surprised that we didn't see all of the Vault Hunters from Borderlands 2 present in the Borderlands 3 reveal trailers. While we did manage to see Maya with a new character, along with Zero acting as some kind of bodyguard for Reese, the fates of the remainder of Borderlands 2's Vault Hunters, Axton, Gage, Salvador, and Krieg, are unknown at this point. My guess is that many of them are still alive, or at the very least, it would be pretty lame if some of these characters died in the events between Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 3. After all, all of Borderlands 1's Vault Hunters managed to make it to Borderlands 2, and even in the case of Roland, who didn't make it into Borderlands 3, his other companions did actually manage to make it into the next game as Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick all make an appearance in the Borderlands 3 reveal trailer. My thinking is, is that the fates of all four of these characters will eventually be revealed to us as we learn more about Borderlands 3, and right now, if I had to make a prediction, I will say that all four will be in Borderlands 3. Moving on though, let's talk about another former Vault Hunter, which is Athena. Though Nisha and Wilhelm were defeated during the events of Borderlands 2, and we can actually confirm that Aurelia and Claptrap are in Borderlands 3, the fate of Athena is unclear for now. What I think we could say is that she survived both the events of the pre-sequel and Tales from the Borderlands, as the Watcher manages to save her during the events of the pre-sequel story, and she can be recruited by Reese to help fight the Traveler in Tales. Given that pretty much all of the recruited characters survive the fight with the Traveler, I think it's fair to say that Athena is most likely alive by the events of Borderlands 3. It's also possible that Athena and Shady Springs could be married at this point in the game's story, as the player can be informed in Tales from the Borderlands that the two are set to get married at some point in the future. With that in mind though, let's actually discuss our third character, which is Janie Springs. While Janie is not as memorable as characters from some of the other main series games, Janie is the first major NPC that you meet in the pre-sequel besides Handsome Jack. For those that haven't played the pre-sequel, Janie Springs helps the player get to Concordia and is the game's analog for Scooter. However, rather than running catch-a-ride stations, Janie runs the Moon Zoomy stations, which provide players with moon-related vehicles. She also has a pretty big role in Tales from the Borderlands as kind of like a counterpart to Athena, and she also is available to recruit for the final fight against the Traveler. If you ask me, Janie making an appearance in Borderlands 3 is going to depend on Athena making an appearance in the game and vice versa. It seems to me if we do see one of them, we're probably going to see the other, so chances are pretty good that we'll see both, or we'll see neither. Okay, so continuing on with pre-sequel characters, we have our last Vault Hunter from that game, which is Jack, or aka Timothy Lawrence. While Randy Pitchford did confirm for us at PAX that Handsome Jack is in fact dead, I still wonder about the fate of Jack's doppelganger from the pre-sequel. While he's not really mentioned in any subsequent materials, like Tales from the Borderlands, it is possible that Timothy may have actually survived long enough after the events of Borderlands the pre-sequel and Borderlands 2. Additionally, these chances are higher than you might think, since the handsome Jack double that the player encounters an opportunity during the events of Borderlands 2 and the doppelganger from the pre-sequel aren't the same person. This is because Jack from the pre-sequel is surgically altered to look and sound like handsome Jack, while the body double has a pocket watch that sort of holographically alters his appearance. In my mind, having this character return is going to largely depend on where Gearbox decides to take Borderlands 3. If they're totally done with Handsome Jack and they want nothing to do with him anymore, then this character is probably not returning, or maybe he returns as Timothy Lawrence. If I had to make a prediction though, just based on feeling, I've got a feeling we're probably not going to see him. This brings us to our fifth character though, which is going to be Mr. Torg. 
I suppose you could say that we saw a lot of Torg weaponry during the trailers, but unfortunately, we didn't really see Mr. Torg himself. Honestly, I was kind of surprised by this fact, since Mr. Torg was featured so prominently in Borderlands 2's DLC as the main character behind Torg's Campaign of Carnage. And he also had a fairly notable role in Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. There's also the fact that Torg is a major fan favorite amongst the community, so not seeing him in any of the trailers so far is kind of weird. As for his likelihood of being in the game, I'd say it's pretty high since he's usually associated with Moxie, Tina, and Lilith in Borderlands 2. And given that all three are currently confirmed as being in Borderlands 3, it stands to reason that Mr. Torg is around somewhere in the Borderlands universe. There's also the fact that he's just a fan favorite character, and even if he doesn't make an appearance in the base game, it seems like he could eventually make an appearance in the game's DLC. We'll see, but in the meantime, I'm going to say he's probably going to be in the game. So, for our number 6 character, we have Fiona. Along with Reese, Fiona was one of the main protagonists from Tales from the Borderlands, and it's kind of strange to see her not make an appearance in the trailer at all. Especially since Reese does as the new CEO of the Atlas Corporation. Last we checked, Reese and Fiona entered the vault together at the end of Tales from the Borderlands, and because of that, it stands to reason that if Reese somehow survived wherever they went, Fiona may have as well. Maybe it's possible that only one of them survived and Fiona didn't make it somehow, but I do think that that would be a waste since she was sort of in training to become a Vault Hunter by the end of the events of Tales. As a number of fans have speculated, it is possible that she could be one of the DLC Vault Hunters for Borderlands 3, which if you ask me, would be really cool. Ultimately, I'd say the likelihood of seeing Fiona again is pretty high for Borderlands 3. Whether she'll be a Vault Hunter or not is hard to say, but I do think that she, along with her sister Sasha, could end up making an appearance. Now, this next character is another one that surprised me, and that is Dr. Zed. Even though he's not quite as popular as Marcus is, Dr. Zed owns pretty much all of the health-related vending machines on Pandora, making him a fairly important character to most of the games released so far. While it's true his fate is uncertain as of the events of Tales from the Borderlands, he is alive by the end of Borderlands 2, so it stands to reason that he could be around in some capacity for Borderlands 3. My guess as to why he hasn't appeared yet comes down to popularity or that he's been totally replaced with Nurse Nina, as she made an appearance in the pre-sequel and owned the majority of the health-related vending machines in the game. At the same time, I always felt like Dr. Zed went really well with Tannis, Marcus, and Moxie, and it could be possible that all four are still together, and Dr. Zed just wasn't in the shot. We'll see what happens, but for now, let's talk about his pre-sequel counterpart, which is Nurse Nina. Though she's a relatively new character in the grander scheme of things, I do think that Nina, like Janie Springs, is one of the more memorable characters from the pre-sequel, as she is a Russian-like doctor that speaks in rough English. This I think really makes her stand out from the rest of the cast, since no one else really acts like this at all. As far as Borderlands 3 is concerned though, it's hard to say what her current status is as she's on the run from Hyperion and Dahl based on some echologs in the pre-sequel, and depending on how that situation is resolved, she could either be in the game or not. I also think it's all going to greatly depend on whether Dr. Zed reappears or not. If Zed reappears, we may not see Nurse Nina. Conversely, if we get Nurse Nina, we might not get Dr. Zed, or maybe Gearbox will surprise us and end up including both characters. If I had to make a prediction, I would say that we'll probably see Dr. Zed, but we won't see Nurse Nina. But like I've said with a number of other entries, it's hard to say. Now, this ninth entry is actually going to be two characters from the Captain Scarlet DLC for Borderlands 2, which are Shade and, of course, Captain Scarlet herself. To some degree, I'm not entirely surprised that neither of these characters showed up. After all, Captain Scarlet really only made an appearance during her own campaign DLC for Borderlands 2, and while Shade did end up having an appearance in Tales from the Borderlands, it is worth noting that his death is determinate, meaning that it's possible that he ends up actually getting shot by August in terms of the overarching Borderlands canon. So in that sense, it's possible that we may not see Shade anymore, simply for the fact that it might conflict with choices that some players made in Tales from the Borderlands, or because the canon dictates that he died. 
Scarlet's Fate, on the other hand, isn't determinate, and as of the Waddle Gobbler DLC for Borderlands 2, she is confirmed as being alive. So it seems like it would be possible for her to return, even if I think it's at least a little unlikely, given that she hasn't reappeared in any official capacity since her own DLC. Who knows though, maybe we end up seeing both Scarlet and Shade, just one of them, or neither in Borderlands 3. That said, both characters were really the best part of their DLC, and it would be nice to see them in the upcoming sequel for old time's sake. And for our final entry, Crazy Earl. Now, not seeing Crazy Earl in the trailer I think is not really all that weird, especially since all he really is in most of the games most of the time is a pair of eyes behind a door. Still though, I think it's fair to say that he is one of the more signature aspects of the Borderlands games, and it would at least seem to me that while he doesn't make an appearance in the reveal trailer, I think it is highly likely that Crazy Earl will be in Borderlands 3. If there's a currency like Iridium in Borderlands 3, Crazy Earl might be the one providing the player with SDU upgrades, just like he did in Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel. So for this one, I'd be surprised if Crazy Earl wasn't in Borderlands 3, and hopefully we'll end up hearing about his inclusion in the next trailer, or when we finally get our hands on the game. Alright guys, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.